Hey everyone, hope you're doing well out there. In this uh, video, I'm going to try to resolve a problem that I found my last trip up to Bend. My Atwood camper jacks weren't lowering down. Well, they were they were trying to lower down and then they would stop and then they would continue for a couple of seconds and then stop. It's like a bad connection was happening. So I'm uh, going to break out the meter and try to do some troubleshooting and figure out what's going on. I ordered some parts when I uh, was up there and hopefully I'm thinking it's the, the little controller, the on off switch for the controller and not the remote control, but the actual controller. I'll show you here in just a second. I'm hoping it's that part. Um, I'm doing some research. I figured out that there is a little battery inside of that little controller and this truck camper being a 2003 manufactured in 2002, it's probably uh, time to replace that. So unfortunately you can't replace just the battery. You have to replace the whole control unit, which is about 40 bucks. Not really a big deal. Just want to go ahead and get it resolved. So when I'm out boondocking somewhere, I don't have an issue lowering the camper jack, especially if I have to lower them for some reason. So let's uh, get troubleshooting. I'll try to recreate what was happening here. Typically when you want to lower your camper jacks, you activate this switch. You hold it down for a couple of seconds and the little red light there, the LED stays lit under active. And that's when you can grab your remote control. This is my Atwood remote. And of course, the first thing you want to do before any of this is check your battery. Make sure that your uh, battery inside here, I think it's a 9-volt battery. Um, make sure that 9-volt battery is good. So you throw your meter on it or just, you know, they're cheap enough to just put a brand new one in every few months or so, depending on use. But the issue I was having is I try to push this button. And nothing happens. See, it'll it'll work for. It'll work for a couple of seconds, and then it'll stop. So, I'm thinking. Let's see if we can get it to retract. Yeah. See, now it's not even retracting. So, I'm going to put my meter on the switch, and then on the where all the wires go into the main controller that's up underneath the stove. So just real quick, I'll show you. On your meter, make sure that you're in, make sure you're in DC. So there's AC and there's DC. And then uh, just take your leads, take your, take your battery out of your controller, your remote control. And uh, on the battery itself, there's negative and positive. Put the red on positive. You can, you can do it either way. It'll just show as negative or positive voltage. And then test your test the voltage on, on your battery here to make sure it's good. This battery has 8.5 volts DC. It's still good. I could I could, you know, put a brand new one in it and it would read, you know probably 9.2 volts, but this is still a good battery at 8.5 volts. And then I'll come over here underneath my stove. You can see the, that's the Atwood jack, kind of the, the brain of the whole thing, uh, where all the wires come in, your power, your main power from your battery. This is 12 volt system. So your main power from your battery and then all of the wires from each of the individual jacks, uh, positive and negative. Um, what this switch does is it, you know, when you want to uh, switch to retract, it'll reverse the polarity and to um, extend again, it'll, you know, run the run the polarity the, the way it needs to go, depending on what you want the jacks to do, if you want them to extend or retract. 
So this is basically just a switch. Um, this changes the polarity. So I want to push the button on the remote control and then t test each one of these uh, lines coming in to make sure I've got positive voltage and negative voltage DC. All right, so I'll try to do this so you can see the meter. First thing I want to do is check 12 volt power coming in to the switch. Oh, this is your, these are your two main lines for your DC voltage. So there I've got 13.7, if you can see that on the meter right there. 13.7 volts, 13.8 volts. Obviously, getting good voltage to the switch. So then I'll put my meter on each one of these uh, lines coming in. So this is the driver front, passenger front, uh, driver, rear, driver rear, and passenger rear. So you've got the fronts and the rears. Um, while I'm pushing down on the remote control to activate the, the other switch that's over there by the door, the remote switch, that will you know tell it to throw 12 volts to whatever button I'm pushing here. So. When you push the activator button, it allows the remote control to talk to the polarity switch. And then that tells it where to throw current. So if it's just on the uh, driver's front, which is what I'm going to test first by hitting the uh, driver front button there, uh, up and down, we'll just reverse the polarity. I'll do that on each one. That'll tell me that uh, I've got good voltage uh, coming in. Now, if I have uh, intermittent voltage, that tells me that I need to check something at the remote switch or possibly the remote control. I doubt it's the remote control, most likely the switch from what I've read. All right, so I've got my positive and negative wire there. You can see the meter. I'm gonna go ahead and push extend. This is the driver's front. 13.4 volts. Okay, so that seems to work good. Now, I'll go ahead and do the same thing on all the rest of the jacks to see if I can figure out if there's any problem between you know, any variances between the uh, individual jacks. And by the way, this is the antenna uh, for your remote control. Okay, so I tested all of the jacks individually. Uh, to They all read 13, between 13.3 and 13.4 volts. So everything looks good as far as uh, on this uh, switcher, so the polarity switcher. That little box that's in there under the stove seems to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and, and just replace the... Oh, and I, I couldn't get... When I was, you know, pushing, testing the individual jacks, I could not get it to recreate what was happening up in Bend, where it would just stop and start. Um, earlier, uh, when I was out back, I could, I could get it to stop and start uh, on one of the rear jacks, but the rest of the jacks seem to be working fine. So I don't know if it's just that intermittent or if there's some correlation there with the different jacks. So again, after I switch out that other little um, switch that's over there, the remote switch, I'll do a, another test and hopefully I can't, I won't be able to recreate the problem because the problem will be resolved. And just a little quick note here, on this switch that's under the stove, well, that's where mine's located. You know, they're going to be in different locations for each manufacturer, but if you can find 
with, with an Atwood switch, if you can find where that's at and you have like a little, one of those little 12 volt DeWalt batteries or a cordless drill battery that's 12 volt, don't do it with anything else, just 12 volt. You can remove those wires for the individual jacks to raise and lower them with that little cordless drill battery. So when you want to extend them, you know, you go regular, you know, polarity, reverse polarity to retract. So you, you can do that with a, a little 12 volt battery if you've got um, access, you know, and, and enough wire there to uh, actually get to the little 12 volt battery. So that would be these guys up here. You would leave, you know, go ahead and leave these connected, but you've got, if, if you've got 12 volts here and it's not feeding through the switch to the individual jack wires, then you can remove your individual sets. So the driver front or the passenger front and so on, connect up to your little 12 volt battery from your DeWalt or whatever other 12 volt brand you have to either raise or lower uh, the jacks individually. So in an emergency situation, that would be okay. Obviously it's not gonna correct any problems that you've got. One other thing I forgot to mention, this little gray communications cable, that is the cable that runs from the switch over to the uh, camper jack activator. So this is this is the little switch that I'm going to replace that will hopefully resolve the problem that I've got going on. But there's a little phone connector. Uh, well, it's not a phone connector. It's a, a data jack on the back of this. So that's one more thing you could check as well. You know, there's a possibility that that data jack, that data cable, you know, has maybe gotten cut or has come disconnected. So that's one more thing to check before you replace any parts, you know, before you spend money to replace any parts. All right, so I've got my fire extinguisher removed and then I'm gonna take these four screws out. Okay, and this just pulls out Here's that gray data cable I was telling you about. I'll go ahead and pull that out. Just make sure anything that you can... You know, there's a big bundle of it back there, so I might... Uh, I might peek my head in there. I've got some access behind this, this old fire extinguisher door to peek my head back there and check the data cable, but if this uh, replacement doesn't work... So the date code on this is 32 of 02. So it was the 32nd week of 2000, or sorry, of, yeah, 2002. So, All right, so I've got my leads down inside here on the, on the switch terminals, pinching those together, and I will, that's my meter. The switch itself seems to be okay. Again, from what I've read, there's a tiny little battery in here somewhere, I'm guessing back in here, that will um, render this switch inoperable. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it and see if I can recreate the uh, issue that I was having. Got my new switch here from Gamma Electronics. This is a direct replacement. So here's the old switch, here's the new switch. They are the same size, the mounting holes line up. The backs are the same, except I see on the new, on the Gamma Electronics, they put some protection back here on the piece on the back of the PCB. So you've got some hot glue and it looks like some uh, board of some sort protecting the connections. 
The date code on this new one is 2220, so the 22nd week of 20, 2020. Um, again, this old one was the 32nd week of 02. And while I was inspecting the switch, I couldn't find anywhere on here where there's a battery. So I, I think I've got some, some bad information from the internet. Just looks like it is a momentary switch. Uh, you've got a little resistor here. You've got an LED right there. And then you've got your data port and the data port connections. Now, you can inspect your connections to make sure all the solders look good on the PCB and make sure everything looks okay, that it's, nothing's arced behind it. And I'm wondering if maybe that's why they've, they've put this protective coating on the back is some people have had problems with maybe bumping up, you know, these things could be mounted inside of a storage compartment where you're, you know, putting stuff in that, you know, might uh, mess up those connections or cause a short. So at any rate, I couldn't find a battery anywhere on here. So I'm guessing it's just the, the momentary switch is bad or somewhere in here there's a bad connection, loose connection or something. And these things are inexpensive enough. I think I paid around $30 for this shipped. I uh, got it on Amazon, so... Um, they're inexpensive enough to just replace without having to mess around with these old ones. All right, so I will go ahead and connect the data cable to the data port. Nice positive connection there. LED lights up. Grab my remote here. I'm gonna go ahead and push the the different jacks individually. Um, this is the driver front. Retract. Passenger front. Driver rear. And passenger rear. So I will run this uh, through its paces a little bit, make sure that I'm not having that intermittent problem again. And I think that was the issue. I think just this control, this little board here had some problems, maybe bad connection on the PCB. So I'm going to call that good for now. And if I figure out uh, this wasn't the issue, I will report back in another video. All right, well, that was an easy fix. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.